Hi, what's up? We're in the we're in the next part. Please go check out the previous part to gauge your bearings. Um, Morelia, I beg you. In the previous part, I was speaking about martyrdom and how it is that it's, of course, a theme in the scriptures about tribulation saints. But I am trying to encourage those tribulation saints because much of my content is only going to get washed after the rapture has happened. Um to survive suicide okay because i have spent the past more than seven years so you will be without excuse if you kill yourself in the tribulation hoping to go to heaven and besides i don't even think that you will have to survive all of the tribulation to get taken up to heaven because i do believe that there is a mid-trib rapture as well as a post-trib i've spoken about that the post-trib rapture is found in uh, matthew 24 at the end and the mid-trib rapture is found in revelation 11 to 12 right you can either look at it in the view of the two witnesses getting caught up and so therefore likely the rest of the church will go all um that scene with the revelation 12 sign where the woman goes into the wilderness and the baby's caught up to the heavens there was a pre-trib rapture where those who believe fervently upon the lord now the five virgins are gonna go us right um so you don't even have to wait as much time as i did like i am a grace to help the tribulation church who will watch my content to survive hardship of the earth of course my situation does not compare to what under heaven it is that the tribulation is going to be like not only are you going to be having some pretty hard knock cognitive dissonance and shock from people you who you are supposed to love and who are supposed to love you treating you like trash that's going to be the first thing but the world is just going to be falling apart like there's going to be plagues falling from the sky there's going to be monsters roaming the streets there's going to be zombies they proper are going to be zombies that's another story for another day i will probably speak on that um some other time there's going to be a lot of there are going to be a lot of oh, oh yeah and there's gonna be severe famine hunger i mean goodness to like die from hunger pangs is uh, quite expensive i would imagine in comparison to just getting shot in the head you know what i'm saying so it will be easier rather than like watching yourself waste away with malnourishment all of your bones caving into your chest and every cavity of your body rather than watch yourself do that you'd much rather likely uh what is this just kind of you know grab a noose and end yourself because you've what said the sinner's prayer i'm trying to help christians get to the three and a half year mark just before the mark of the beast gets taken there will be a rapture and then the harvest that's going to be around thanks to the witness of the two witnesses uh that will be the those will be the guys that are going to get lamb basted by the massacring beheading thing and then there's going to be the collection of the saints that are still alive from the four corners of the earth at the end right so you only have three and a half years in each cycle to basically survive but i do understand the intensity of your sorrow will likely be grander far beyond what i could have ever experienced right so therefore i guess maybe the reason why mine is stretched out all these years my suffering even though it's somewhat of a foreshadowing of what's to come is because mine is mild in comparison i mean my life's conditions are horrible my situation is incredibly tough it's rough it's Im embarrassing okay it's embarrassingly uh abusive yet i have a bed to lay i have internet that's why i can even communicate this stuff i have e food to eat i'm not emaciated i'm not yet i have got face products that i can buy to experiment with anti-aging treatments i can buy retinol vitamin c do you understand i've got beautiful food on my plate every day i when i'm complaining i'm complaining because my linseed has run out my moringa has run out i'm not complaining that food has run out so my situation is frankly a pin drop in the ocean minuscule just a prick as opposed to a stab in comparison to what you will go through in the tribulation but on this side of the rapture it is exorbitantly rough and nobody can even fathom how i have survived so long so you're about to enter into a much worse time but you will not have suicide for an excuse because i will have made it i will have made it suicide is always such a hard topic for me to talk about because there are people who because they have lost loved ones um to it want to somehow ex like explain all that which they were going through away or as a way to somehow place them in heaven and i frankly don't believe they are there okay first and foremost and let me say south africa all right is has been predictively programmed by hollywood to be an experimentation hub the first one in africa to unleash some kind of a um an experiment a social experiment and the show resident evil evidences that the most recent resident evil that has been done on netflix as a series not so much a movie go check it out on netflix there's a show called resident evil not the one with mila jovovich the most the, a newer version with a younger girl 
she's African American. Okay, uh, yeah, no. In that show, they are based in Cape Town, South Africa, and the Umbrella Corporation operates from out of there. I found it strange that they chose South Africa as opposed to somewhere in the US. And when then I experienced everything that I'm experiencing, or rather, by the time I saw that Resident Evil and I was experiencing what I was experiencing, I was like, you know, the scriptures are right when they say the hearing ear and the seeing eye both are from the Lord. Because I'm so awake in Christ, these things fall into my lap in so an obvious way of mapping back to the realities that we're in. I no longer struggle with unraveling puzzles, guys. I no longer struggle to figure things out, to go, ah, I wonder. Nothing that happens anymore do I need to decipher and have an aha moment. I am so, like, suffering persecution has refined my spiritual senses so much that I immediately spot things, that I, feel, I look around and I imagine people should see this. It's like being the only one to hear an explosion go off in a packed town, a packed city square, and it goes boom, boom, and you're the only one that is alarmed. You're the only one that twitches, glitches. You're the only one that gets down on the ground while everybody is busy just walking around as normal. I guess that's what it means to be unplugged out of the matrix. These things are so obvious to me and I feel like more people should see it for what it is, but they don't. South Africa is obviously handpicked from out of all of Africa to be the first immoral ground of breaking out some kind of, you know, a social experiment, hopefully infiltrating the rest of Africa. We are ground zero in Africa. We are the tantamount in Resident Evil and of Raccoon City. And that was predictively programmed into the show The Resident Evil, the second version, volume two. And it's on Netflix. Go check it out. It's in Cape Town, South Africa. Lo and behold, them confessing that evidenced in, was already evident in my life. It was already evident in my life. I don't know when the experiment commenced, but it is already evident in my life. I see it everywhere. I see that South Africa is the, the first place to go out of all of Africa. I see it. Not only in my life, but in decisions, goodness gracious, during... What do you call a group of lions? Thank you. Month. I feel like I can use the word pride month. Okay. But maybe not the two of them together. Just the word pride. Anyway, during what do you call a lion? A pack of lions? A pride. During that month. Okay. South Africa. Two companies that I know of. Vodacom, a telecommunications service provider. And a bank. Capitec changed their logo to the colorful agenda yeah thank you to basically stand with collective of lions month okay and for me it was like this is south africa we've got some pretty bad issues with uh gender-based violence you could have done something like that and the same month that is the american colorful month in our country is youth month it's the month for young people june 16 is the Soweto Uprising Day that uh, basically marks a time in history where the youth in the country were fighting for better education because Bantu education was a bummer, okay? And um, a young man by the name of Hector Peterson died. There's a whole memorial of his in Soweto somewhere. Where is it called? Dube. Ay, angazi, somewhere. Dube, yeah. Eko Dube. Is it Dube? Ay, angazi, man. Somewhere called Soweto. Not far from Killer Road. Okay, very well. So, Hector Youth Day is, we can remember, we commemorated around uh, that particular event in history. It's South African history. It's our culture and it is our heritage and it is our historical moment where we ought, you know, light candles and have a moment of silence. The Vodacom, as well as a Capitec, and I don't know who else follows suit, but I know definitely these two companies did that. They could have, you know, changed their brand logos to the face of Hector Peterson or school shoes or books for children or, you know, a, a little graduation hat logo to say happy youth month or whatever instead they decided to stand with a colorful agenda an american ideology an american holiday frankly and they have made it ours they made their logo that and they completely ignored the theme of youth month they completely ignored youth month something we've been celebrating ever since i was a youth and they ignored youth month in favor of uh of, of 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 this like colorful agenda right and you think that south africa is not raccoon city like i said among the first african countries to fully embrace woke ideology fully embrace it to a point of ignoring their own cultural heritage in favor of a woke rubbish if you think that south africa is an enemy of america which it currently is acting like it is you are duping yourself because if south africa was really truly standing with china and russia so you can see how this is all just mapping together well and what alliances they claim to have actually aren't really alliances or what 
enmities they apparently all have with one another are actually not enmities like they're enemies in public but they can shake hands in the background is in the fact that south africa is busy pushing colorful month in brand logos of massive corporations in the com in the country while ignoring our own cultural heritage while also claiming that they're anti-usa while also entering into an agreement with um China and Russia, I guess, was a bricks basically to, you know, tarry away from the world's reserve currency that is um the dollar, trying to create their own currency, trying to like they are breaking away. They have annoyed, irritated the fight that was had uh between America and South Africa when that senator or whatever in the UN and United States of America accused South Africa of providing weapons to Russia. All the parties in this country, including Julius Malema's EFF. Uh, went and on a rampage basically complaining that Ewana America you are disrespectful how dare you accuse us of colluding with Russia against the Ukraine so on paper on, on the forefront it looks as if though South Africa is starting to break away from the USA but here it is that South Africa is strangely embracing this colorful ideology to a point of ignoring their own cultural heritage in favor of this this uh funny little uh collection of lions month is also uh well, what is this uh, the main sort of kind of I idea or agenda in that not so much cop 28 that's coming up but the resolutions of the united nations also as they are mixed together with the world economic forum to push this agenda the climate conference blah blah that's coming whatever they are trying what does that even have to do with anything they are trying to infiltrate this particular agenda just like any kind of rebellion they are pushing it more than they pushed black rights more than they pushed women's rights more than they pushed any other you know movement in history it's eerie it's weird pushing black rights was a plan of god pushing women's rights in very many respects was also a plan of god but this is obviously so anti-god that when the, when they push it more than anything else that they've ever pushed they're obviously trying to push a satanic ideology create as much calamity societal degradation as possible that we might create so much disorder on the earth so that we can be perfectly able to come and rescue it all when everything falls apart when things brim over the folds let's annoy everyone so much and so fast that there will be so much calamity so many wars on the ground with people fighting because they feel so bombarded by this colorful agenda that ultimately when they like scratch each other's eyeballs out we'll be the ones to rock up and just kind of save the day they are creating a Hegelian dialectic model they are creating a chaos so that they can come in and bring order and south africa is acting as if though it is an enemy of the usa currently whereas here it is that it is busy standing for this global agenda and wokeism which we all know is the infant of america and it has been introduced into a school as a naughty boy that does not respect teachers and he influences all the other kids to disrespect the kids the teachers how do you embrace american ideology so warmly to a point of scooting aside your own youth day your own youth month and then claim to be an enemy of america how it's like it just did not make sense to me but like i said these things are obvious to me in a way that is very stark yet nobody is ducking nobody else in my ecosystem is ducking and i, I just like i don't understand why south africans are not creasing their foreheads wondering what in the world is going on a country that is struggling to keep its lights on is busy proliferating a colorful agenda it's busy converting its bank logos into rainbow colors when we can't even switch the lights on whatever happened to serving the needs of the people on the ground as they are immediate to us it's like south africa is the first experimental hub ground for the hegelian dialectic let's calamitize south africa first out of all of africa and when it successfully has fallen apart and been indoctrinated it will be our loop our tunnel into africa because the rest of africa is just hella stubborn to bend but if we can get to south africa we will get to the rest of africa south africa is the first domino that we are tipping and that show resident evil where the umbrella corporation's headquarters were in south africa cape town was a big fat chunky sign that something was coming to south africa i already knew at the time because i was suffering but the um what do you call this the extremity of sorrow that ultimately f happened over and above the existing situation pretty much came after that time after that show was released on netflix the you can even check when it first launched on netflix okay that was when we started getting things like stage six seven load shedding in the country that is when we started getting multiple power cuts a day taking away about 10 hours of power in a day and there seems to be no uh solution and no end in sight it's like our economy is being picked away brick by brick that is also uh when the announcement was made that we have been gray listed not when afterwards we got gray listed as a country after that show on netflix went uh aired uh we also but this also happened around covid around the the the, the disease right the um economic state of the country fluctuated to a point where ratings agencies started to junk status the nation economically and we just have not recovered ever since then we have not recovered there then were those uh, lootings in kzn 
uh, the guys like even the calamities that the Lord has poured out on South Africa are precisely because our wickedness has has only ever intensified. Um, we've gotten more evil. South Africa, we are uh, blessed with good weather in the sense that if we have snow, really, mostly it's in Cape Town, but our weather's never so bad. Uh, hardly ever will you ever hear of South Africans passing away from a weather event, like too much flooding, too much snow, too much whatever. We tend to just kind of be somewhere in the middle. Even our winters are not that cold. Our summers are not that hot in comparison to the rest of Africa, albeit us being in Africa. We don't have extreme weather and we also don't have natural disasters like hurricanes, tornadoes, earthquakes. We don't have any such thing. There was a day here. Okay, first of all, there was that uh, th those incredible floods in KZN that caused an entire bridge to collapse. Uh, the floods recently go Cape Town, right? That have been happening that were, were doing the rounds on television. Um, they then were there. Okay, so with floods, it's like, okay, fine. It's always rained. It's always rained. Again, so we're told there by... Killer Road, go uh, south, uh, like near lands and whatnot. There were again floods that consumed people's homes whole. Stuff like that barely ever happens in South Africa. And it started happening just the past year, two years alone. After that show was released, that was a judgment from God because evil had increased in the land. All right. Now, okay, fine. So we've always gotten some, you know, rain issues every so often. Mm -hmm. Okay, flood causing a bridge to collapse. Maybe we can just say it's, what do they call this thing? C, C, C squared, the one that's worship of Mother Nature. Okay, you go figure out what C squared st stands for. Maybe it's uh, C squared. But guys, if there's anything that we don't experience in this country, it's earthquakes. It's earthquakes. Maybe a, an earth tremor because there was something that happened in another country and it's an aftershock that comes to Africa and makes us vibrate like jelly on a plate. And then we find ourselves standing again. Never have we ever gotten buildings collapse and people die because of an earthquake in this country. There was I don't sleep until after 2 a.m. I spoke about that in one of my other series because of the fact that I'm always praying and if I try to sleep at like, any time before midnight I get woken up ranged out of sleep by demonic attack so I don't even bother my, my, my routine my schedule is such that I only go to bed after 2 a.m. so I was still awake watching Netflix I was watching I believe Blacklist and guys right here as I'm awake my whole family is asleep the neighborhood pretty much is asleep I feel underneath my bed like Yazzie I switched off Netflix it lasted something like 10 10 seconds longest little aftershock or whatever or sh movement of the earth that there was when i was working at mtn it happened during the day one time but it literally lasted like a second or two it was like the building went goo -goo -goo for two seconds and it stopped that's all that we've ever experienced in south africa but for an earthquake like it was a proper earthquake that lingered for a good 10 to 15 seconds i i had enough time while the earth was shaking to hop out of bed go outside to see if i'm not seeing things I was half waiting for my cat to wake up, but it was not so violent that my cat would be woken up. It, st it stayed sleeping, so I thought I, it was, I thought I was losing my mind. I thought I was feeling it by myself. I heard nobody crying or screaming outside or being like, hey, Nothing. So I thought I was the only one. I was like, Lord, am I losing my mind? Lord, really, I mean, I know I've been suffering a lot and sometimes suffering can cause a person to lose their minds. Is my brain leaving me? Am I feeling things? Am I hallucinating? Is this a demonic attack on just me? And the... the something told me as I'm busy asking the Lord if I'm losing my mind because I thought I felt it by myself like I'm so desirous for the rapture and for the Lord to return that when I feel an, a, a natural disaster happening that has never happened in my particular existence in my particular country ever I, I you know self-fulfilling prophecy and a confirmation bias can make a person feel stuff it's like having a phantom illness hey eh? you tell yourself you've got a headache long enough until you get it yeah I thought maybe I was having a phantom uh uh what, what do they call it birth pains earthquakes in various places wars than rumors of wars I, I imagine that because I so desire for the rapture to happen that I'm busy fulfilling Bible prophecy in my own brain. I thought it was a phantom earthquake that I felt just by myself. But something told me, Google, go and find out on the internet if at all, you know, there is a seismology department in this country or in this world that, you know, immediately reports earth ramblings and, 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 and grumblings immediately. And lo and behold, right there, a good perhaps like 15 minutes after that event happened, it was immediately on the internet so i guess it was automated it's an automated system that just releases this data right it's likely global i don't think it's south africa but if it is south african then whatever it released a uh, se seismic activity i said what is there an earthquake near my area now my, com my computer uh sort of knows my location 
Yeah, and indeed, I saw one of a magnitude 5.5. That is huge for South Africa. It's massive. In Boxburg. In Boxburg. You will, like, if, guys, you know there was an earthquake in Boxburg. It made the news. <laughs> I felt it. It made the news. It was on ENCA. If you're not living in South Africa, just Google earthquake in Boxburg. Boxburg is spelled B-O-K-S-B-U-R-G. Poor Boxburg. That's the same place where that horrible explosion near the gas tanker happened last year in December. They just keep on, you know, getting it. Yeah, there was an earthquake of a 5.5 magnitude in Boxburg. And it was so cataclysmic that it 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 just it ripped, it brought down one one complex in I believe Benoni or whatever. The whole unit, like an individual unit of complexes, fell, caved in. They fell on people. It, it, the structures are collapsed. The residents got displaced. Uh, I believe there were some deaths even recorded. I don't know how many though. We've never had the kind of earthquake in this country that would cause a building to collapse. We only get little shakes because I guess the earth is burping or whatever. But we don't ever get the kinds of earthquakes that bring buildings down. So basically history was made. History was made by that earthquake in Boxburg. And uh, just to explain to you how far Boxburg is, I, I told you guys that Boxburg is spelled B-O-K-S-B-U-R-G. So if you're not living in this country, you can Google it and you will find it on a news on any news channel in South Africa. Uh, Boxburg, South Africa earthquake. Uh, what month are we in now? June. Yes, it happened earlier this June. So go Google it or maybe... Nah, definitely was not made was june it happened this month it made the news and when i saw it on the news i was like now that was another confirmation that i was not feeling it that i was not creating a phantom illness in my body that i didn't have a self-fulfilling prophecy so desperate for the longing of bible prophecy to be fulfilled that i would like feel an earthquake when there is none boxburg just to explain to you how far it is from where i stay how far it is from where i stay it's um i am in the west rand of johannesburg in ready but as a, 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 a town called Wilkehevel. Boxburg is in the east rand of Johannesburg. So opposite side of the cardinal map. Johannesburg is a province. A province would be the tantamount of a state. So if you take any state in the US, and I use the US as a barometer because everybody knows American states. Take, I don't know how, like, um... The size of Johannesburg, what it can be compared to an American state, but you guys can Google it really. Just go on Google and say, wh what state is Johannesburg, South Africa as big as? Not Johannesburg, guys. Gauteng. Gauteng is a province, sorry. Uh, Johannesburg is a city, so it would be like New York City. You know how New York is a state, but it also is a city? Um, so Johannesburg is a city. Gauteng is a province which, should, which is the equivalent or the tantamount of a state. So Boxburg is on the east rand of, of, um, of the state of Gauteng, of Johannesburg. Um, while Wuchyevel, where I'm at, is the west rand. So it's literally opposite. It's the east and west. So grab a similar sized state to Gauteng, South Africa, and then measure the kilometerage or the, or the uh, mileage, all right, of how many kilometers it is from the east of one state to the far west of one state and gauge, therefore, how far Boxburg is to where I'm at. Yet I felt it. I felt it. It's the opposite side on the cardinal map. I'm on the west, they're on the east. And the far extreme Nohal. So I am basically the farthest away in Gauteng from where that earthquake happened. I'm the farthest away. I'm the farthest away. Maybe those who would be even farther away would be those who are far west, like almost entering into the next province, which is the northwest. But I, I am as good as far away gets. I'm as good as far away gets from that place. And I felt it all. So basically, that earthquake, I would imagine, was felt by all of Johannesburg. It was felt by all of Gauteng. There were people in Pretoria talking about it. But it was the epicenter of it was in Boxburg. That kind of earthquake never heard of in this country. We don't have issues with weather like that. We don't have issues with nature like that, with climate like that. Yet it happened. So why in the world would the Lord hook up that kind of magnitude earthquake in a country that does not know such a thing? It's because of the intensification of sin in South Africa as a result of them signing a deal with the devil and acting as if though they don't know what's going on. They are pretending like they are at enmity with the US, first of all, or with certain countries in the world when it's very very clear that they are allied with each other and this wickedness has angered the lord and it has created an earthquake in a diverse place in boxburg and on the earth distress of nations the sea and the waves roaring we are raccoon city we are ground zero do you understand
happened in Africa. It's gonna shuba here in South Africa in terms of moral degradation and moral turpitude. It's very hard for immorality to thrive in a society with a corrupt, not so much a corrupt government, but where there is not a, a strong or an established government. Many parts of Africa are poor. They still have so many issues that they don't have time to be with the luxury of embracing multiple pronouns, for instance, when it comes to um, the genders. There's just no luxury. When when you've got Kwashiorkor and Scurvy here, when you've got uh, Rubella there, when you have got, what do you call this thing? Mal-ish? When you have got malnourishment everywhere. When you have got HIV thriving there, here, and everywhere. When you've got hunger. When you have got, like, uh, gangs that are terrorizing entire villages with no law and order being enforced. When you've got civil war all over the show, you really don't have time to be calling people they, them. You don't have time to be calling people, uh, even cat or animal or dog. There's no room for that level of moral degeneracy in other parts of Africa because they're going through so much rubbish. So in a much freer society with a better constitution, with less civil war, a lot more peace, which South Africa is, that is a breeding ground for Raccoon City. It is a breeding ground to experiment on them because these people are not nonchalant to suggestion because of their sorrow, because of everything else that they're going through, because they have to live in a hay house that every so often when it rains gets blown away by the, by the, by the currents. Such a person does not have time to have gender reaffirming surgery or even gender dysphoria for crying out loud. Like you don't even have time to notice that you've got an effeminate way about you as a boy when your mom's house is facing collapse because of rain. But when you are in South Africa where everything is relatively hunky dory, then you will complain about silly things like like, why in the world are you not calling me a girl when I'm a girl, even though I was born a boy? Why in the world are you not respecting my pronouns? Why in the world are you that? Yeah, South Africa is woke because it can afford to. And the citizens of South Africa complain about a lack of electricity, but they don't complain about a lack of clean water. They also do not complain about hunger, thirst, malnourishment, uh, like just disease thriving with nobody uh, coming for anybody. South Africa is... is not so socio-economically devastated and barren with a social political and geopolitical climate that is so devastated that they cannot afford to basically fun uh, um, focus on non-essentials so all these non-essential doctrines that are being shoved down the throat of nations that have got relatively free constitutions and better societal circumstances they are used as, as, as that which to vehicle in, usher in, immorality in their neighboring countries. <sighs> Guys, yes, there's so much going on. <laughs> South Africa's Raccoon City. I also watched a video on YouTube recently. It was shared by this one guy who does Christian content by the name of Ricky on Church Reality Check. It was of a, I don't know if it's a parent or a teacher or a, a fish or an official of government. Um, One minute. Or a government official. But this woman was basically complaining about, uh, against some proposed law in the country that is gunning for our children our children isn't america the place where kids are being targeted for all different kinds of indoctrination well raccoon city number two south africa that's where we're at this law is an education bill as if though we don't have power cast to deal with a an education bill where wait for it guys they uh, want to teach children without the consent of parents not sex education. This woman made it clear that this is not sex education. But they want to indoctrinate children. They want to train kids how to masturbate from as young as five years old. They also want to uh, force children to learn about the colorful agenda, the woke agenda, absent of their parental consent. They also want to re deny children access to schooling if they are not... V-A-C-C-I-N-A-T-E-D. You cannot enter a child into a school unless they have taken that thing. It's a proposed bill. They also want to... There was another bizarre um, law that they want to introduce in this regard. They... Oh, yeah. Uh, the, the curriculum that is teaching children that there is... The, uh, this colorful agenda, basically a whole bunch of sexuality in the school system. They also want to shove it down the throats of homeschooling parents. Like America got it better than us. They are saying that even when you homeschool, you have to abide by these laws or your child's education won't be recognized. So if your kid does not have this in their curriculum, they cannot not, they cannot matriculate. They cannot be recognized as moving on to the next grade and the next grade and the next grade, meaning that they are basically blocking higher learning for any child. So all these kids have got to be infected by the injection 
just to be scholars in South Africa. And they also have got to learn woke ideology. Or else they can hack phrase that. Yes, they also want to allow abortions, termination of pregnancies for children from the age, uh, as, as early as the age of 12 without them consenting. And they can get this done through the education system. What does that have to do with even the education? Never mind a medical system. Never mind hospitals and doctors. This is a education law. So you can basically ask for an abortion at your high school, at your primary school. If you're 12 years old, that would be primary. They want to, they, they have introduced this into law. Not, they, they, it's a proposed bill that still has to have some kind of road shows and whatnot for South Africans to approve or, or, or lack thereof and this time around it is a prescription whereas before it was a suggestion parents uh, initially apparently stood against such a recommendation five years ago now they're trying again and this time they're doubling down they're doubling down and they're saying that it is not only for um, government schools but private schools as well as home schools so if you are in South Africa you can forget about your children escaping this ideology as a Christian parent you, your, your child is basically being told unless they get the injection and unless they get trained woke ideology they cannot move from grade one to two to three to basically 12 they can't go to university they cannot get educated in this country if they don't abide by these laws what like what right this is shocking right yeah no it's a whole proposed bill in this country in africa imagine that africa it's a whole proposed bill and it's it came this year in 2023 go google it please i implore you i implore you and this woman was saying guys we have to stand they're coming for our children i would not want my 12 year old kid being able to get an abortion um from the age of 12 without my without me knowing about it and i also do not want my five-year-old child being taught how to masturbate what does that have to do with education what nobody knows and yes south africa claims to be an enemy of america and a friend of china and russia this would never pass in china ever the chinese one thing that they got down is the morality of their own citizens even though they want the whole world immoral this would never fly in china and yes south africa is claiming to be at enmity with america no no south africa is proliferating the agenda of the globalists even though they're they're, they're currently claiming that they are part of that which is going to take away the power of the u.s what they rather are part of is that they're just an experimental hub an experimental hub of africa guys these things that are happening are just shocking like out of this world and you can't even escape it as a homeschooling parent Parent. So as a Christian, where do you go? Unless you move your kid out of state, out of the country, you can forget about raising your kid in the admonition of the Lord in South Africa. One comment um, in that video on YouTube was, who I'm so grateful I kept my children in Lesotho because then they don't have to be subjugated to the tyranny of the South African rubbish nonsense. Well, Lesotho is a neighboring country. If anything, it's not even neighboring. It's right inside South Africa. Like Lesotho used to be part of South Africa. It's in the center of South Africa, but it is a, it, it, it has its own sovereignty. So, I mean, so Lesotho is probably going to be the first to get cooed then uh, followed by Botswana and then they're gonna go into Zimbabwe you know in the middle, like just these uh, neighboring countries in southern Africa and then it's gonna go to the rest of Africa to the rest of Africa so you who are priding yourself in the fact that you at least your kids are in Lesotho Lesotho is like the epiglottis inside the mouth of South Africa when South Africa swallows Lesotho is eventually going to go down the throat it's what you must understand yo guys <laughs> this happened this year in 2023 all these other things that I have highlighted to you I started happening some time ago there are so many other things that have been happening in South Africa that caught us off like all of us by shock Mara people think it's just normal like the whole polygamist ideal with uh, shows like Scandal and uh, Rhythm City all of a sudden introducing polygamous marriages, forcing women in a country that has got a very bad case of gender-based violence. They're trying to force women to embrace polygamy, uh, abuse, just infidelity from men. It's just a chaos, like moral turpitude that is being injected into the nation and our president is embracing it. The polygamous ideology was first introduced to a president that was a polygamist, Jacob Zuma, and it's just been downhill from there. Downhill from there. So it is no wonder, therefore, that men feel so entitled to me in this country. This is is Bosnia. This is, uh, what do you call this? Um, Kigali, R Rwanda, in the center of the Rwandan genocide. And I just so happen to be a Tutsi, while the Houthis are massacring anyone that does not stand for their agenda. South Africa is a war zone, a spiritual cesspool. And the only people that are of sober mind are being thrown away like their toilet paper that you have used to wipe your behind after defecating. All that's left to do with it is to flush it. All I am is stained or soiled toilet paper in a toilet and people are waiting to flush me and my whole country is just standing back watching on some whoops how in the world have they succeeded to do this all the witchcraft on the ground all the sorcery on the ground in this country that is being left to brew has made a demonic climate sufficient enough to lull to sleep kind of hypnotize days 
South Africans that all these stealthy, these pernicious infiltrations into the nation will be received with, what is this? But in a dizzy spell. And so ultimately you just have this nation that looks nothing like what it looked like just five years ago, just 10 years ago. And you are in it and you're like, whoops, how did things get here? We are raccoon city in Africa. Raccoon city. Do you understand? Polygamy, gender-based violence, uh, corruption of presidents, what is this? Uh, slip... Um, Sweeping under the carpet, all different kinds of corruption of our politi politicians, corruption of which is proven caught on camera, uh, exculpatory, and yet they get away with it because of some majority rule in a parliament that is majority ANC. Like, I just like, whoa, like the money in the couch, yes, yeah, so Ramaphosa, that, that gets to me, that gets to me. How the dude could not even face indictment, and yet here it is that they're like, they went and they indicted uh, Donald Trump in the US. Like, guys, they, so the Africa is a nation in free fall, and its president is happy to let it be in free fall because he has signed some nefarious deal to allow his country to be calamitized that he might be given a, 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 a nefarious version or a diabolical version of a ticket into their Noah's Ark. He's got shielding or protection from the calamity that will ultimately fall on the country when it falls because in order to get a globalist government in operation countries gotta fall. Countries gotta fall and well I mean South Africa help us and we'll help you president because really we need to handle these people. We are raccoon city. I'm going to tie in how this moves into the whole suicide thing because they're trying to kill off anyone that doesn't stand with them because they don't want it to be obvious by murdering them. Next part.